worship you, Lord. We thank you. You have given us life. Thank you for all you've been and done for us. From the 20th of June, all the way through Greater Works, and now Divine Encounter, we are grateful, Lord. Out of what you've given us, we give back to you. Bless this, and may your kingdom progress, and let each life be blessed in Jesus' name. Let's say a big amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Oh, how many of you are excited to be here tonight? Oh, hallelujah. The Lord has been good to us. All the way from 40 days of power through to greater works. And now, divine encounter. Oh, may our lives never be the same. I said, may our lives never be the same. May we not just go through the motion, but may God impact us. And beyond the divine encounter, may we become champions who will be used by God to promote his kingdom. If you are ready for that, shout, I am ready, Lord. Say a big amen and put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm trusting God that none of us will be the same. None of us will be the same. Turn to your brother or sister and tell him, oh, hey, beyond the 40 days of power and greater ways and now divine encounter, tell him, oh, hey, may your life never be the same. Shout a big amen. Put your hands together for the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. And we are blessed. People of God. I said we are highly blessed. To open the conference tonight. Oh. One of the champions in the western region. The first time he came to this church, we had not even owned this property. We were having, I think, an all night. And then he came to lead us. I mean, it was such an awesome time. And we thank God that the unction that was released on us, we moved on and moved on till finally God gave us this property. Oh, why don't you celebrate the goodness of God? Oh, hallelujah. He has a beautiful church. Kingdom Harvesters Ministry. Awesome church. Powerful church. Oh, hallelujah. Very thriving church in the region. And for us to have him today or tonight opening this conference, listen to me. We are blessed. Oh, turn to your brother or sister and tell him we are really, really blessed to have the seasoned man of God busy. Sometimes I'll send him a message. I mean, oh God. Are you in the country? I want to know because before I realize, oh, he's somewhere, flying somewhere and then, but thank God this year, if I last year he was here, I was not even around. You know, it should tell you the extent of our ministry friendship. I was not here, but I trusted that he handled everything. And he did just that. Why don't you celebrate the Lord? You know, it's not everyone you can trust. <laughs> or entrust your church into. In fact, I can be away for one year and then entrust this church into his hands and I know everything will be alright ah credible man of God full of the word full of the unction people of God the founder and the general vassia of Kingdom Harvester Church Reverend Edwin Paddy Aqua welcome me with a shout out to the Lord
Hallelujah. Put your hands together to the glory of God. And let's honor mommy and daddy. Oh, you can do better. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall we be seated for a while, please? Hallelujah. It's a joy to be back home. You didn't hear that. I said it's a joy to be back home. Hallelujah. It's now since, you know, uh, we got to meet together. And, uh, you know, every time that I come here, I see new things. I see new people. Hallelujah. And God bless you, everyone who have been holding their hands, bringing this ministry this far through thick and thin. Great leaders, clap for yourself. Clap for yourselves. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you can only go as far as not your dream but your team. So if we have great leaders like this, I mean, I've seen others who have come and gone, but God still raises people to stand in the gap. And you are here. You are here. We are here. Hallelujah. Amen. We bless the name of the Lord for your lives, mama and daddy, and the leadership in the house. And I also have um, some of the brethren from Kingdom Harvesters fellowshipping with us. Hallelujah. Some of our media people, our pastors are here. Come on, kindly wave your hands to us. KHM folks who are here, some of them all the way back there. God bless you so much. Hallelujah. Amen. And um, the lady pastor, Dorcas Padiaco, also sends her greetings all the way from France. And I'm sure she's watching right now and praying for all of us some of our pastors in other places of the world they are also tuning in they say they can't miss this one so mama permission for all of them to join they are faith to yours so that volumes of faith can rise before the lord amen hallelujah amen greater works is gone and we have a divine encounter and we thank god for his goodness we thank him that as we avail ourselves and we come before him, he does whatsoever he pleases with us. Amen. Shall we, shall we, shall we hear the word of God and then we will know where we are going from here. Hallelujah. We want to just speak from um, Daniel chapter number four. Daniel chapter four. Daniel chapter 4 and from verse number 17. Daniel chapter 4 verse number 17. Let's hear the word of God. It says, this sentence is by the decree of the heavenly. I'm reading from the Amplified Classifier. Classic. It says, this sentence is by the decree of the heavenly watchers. And the decision is by the word of the holy ones. To the intent that the living may know. To the intent that the living may know that the most high God rules. Rules the kingdom of mankind and gives it to whoever he will and sets over it the humblest and lowliest of men. Amen. Hallelujah. The, uh, the message puts it this. He said that he arranges kingdoms, affairs, and however he wishes, and makes leaders out of losers. <laughs> Amen. May the Lord God add his blessings to the reading of his word. Tonight I go by the team, God rules. Hallelujah. Amen. God rules. And God rules how? God rules in the affairs of men. God rules in the affairs of men. 
I'm sure those of us around here in the West African sub-region, when we say rulership, everything points to the government, uh, different governments coming into power, and we also seeing that not, not long from now, Ghana will be coming into our electional season and will be electing a president. Hallelujah. Whenever you talk about rule, rulership, you are inferring something or a person who comes, comes like a captain, a lawgiver, a potentate. You are talking about a governor, sovereignty, and so on and so forth. You could go on and then you can talk about somebody who has a jurisdictional right. The person has a control. Everybody say control. Hallelujah. A person who has a control. A person who has an influence or direction or mastery, authority, and so on and so forth. And so, looking at it from that essence, we say that God rules in the affairs of man. In other words, man is not an end in himself or herself. Man depends on God for God's rulership to work in us. Hallelujah. Tonight, we are trusting that we will come to the place where we will embrace the opportunity to recognize God's sovereignty, God's sovereign rule, and our ultimate source in our everyday life. God is the ultimate source of our life. When we say that he rules in the affairs of man, it means that we will not be resourced without his source. Is somebody listening? Again, in stretching this further from the team, we want to say that there is also irrespective of the fact that he is in control, he is large and in charge, there is the good news of the fact that uh, we have a choice to participate in rule by yielding to divine dictates, by yielding to his divine dictates, by yielding to his divine dictates. By this I'm saying that God will do whatsoever we desire him to do in our life in terms of his performance in our life. But all his performances will be hinged on our perception of him. And so talking about the fact that God rules, the question becomes, do you know it? Do you see it that way? Or you see that you are in charge of yourself? Are we, come, are we getting it? And so then we have been brought to an opportune time in this very service as I tried to instruct you. Just be quiet, take some notes as you can. Let me instruct a bit and we will get into the inspirational side. Are we understanding what I'm saying? And so then we need to come to that place where we will know that if God will perform anything in our life, it is his performance is hidden on your perception of his rule. Hallelujah. Amen. But the truth becomes this, when your perception is in the wrong, your credence goes to the created instead of the creator. When your perception, when I don't see the service well, when I don't see the leadership here well, when I don't trust the lead, I have a wrong perception. Every attitude of mine towards this place will be wrong. Hallelujah. And so permit me in this journey to open up with one great statement that a man, one of the generals of faith said. His name is Charles Spurgeon. His name is Charles Spurgeon. Spurgeon said this. He said that the day he understood and believed the truth of God's sovereignty and rulership was the second greatest day in his life. The day he understood and believed the truth of God's sovereignty was the second greatest day in his life. And he said second only to the day he was converted in faith. And the day he grew up from baby to a man. 
And so what was Spurgeon trying to say here? He is saying that being born again is okay. It is a means to an end. It is not the end in itself. Being born again is like stepping out of Egypt into the wilderness. You are not in the promised land here. Tell your neighbor you are not in the promised land here. Tell the other one that you are work in progress. Tell the other one that you are working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. And so he was trying to infer here that, listen, even though being born again is good, but the day I understood God's sovereign rule, that God rules in the affairs of man, it was the great one of the or the second greatest day in his life. Hallelujah. The reason being this that most of the time we tend to lose sight of the fact that God is large and in charge. And anytime we lose sight of this, your attitude towards the work of God in your life becomes questionable. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered him from them all. But I'm telling you, if you get into affliction, whether by your own setup, whether by demonic setup, whether it is by God's own setup to lift you up to another level or what, if you don't take care, you can curse God and die. If you don't understand that God rules, so now, Spurgeon saying this brings our attention to the fact that just being born again and then knowing Christ is not, it's not enough. We must come to terms of the fact that in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. And therefore, if he began it, he must finish it with you. If grace brought you this far, grace must continue with you. Through thick and thin, some of us even don't know that the grace of God also comes to help us go through suffering. And so Spurgeon was saying to us this, that listen, we need to, under, when you understand it, no matter what the storms be, you will sing, yes, who come in home with Odimeji. Yes, who come in home, mama ni who Ni ma brabra sa sa so treni dani butu. So we come into that place where you realize that no shaking. Because my God rules. I came to preach to some people here. Not everybody. Some of you, you have gone through some things. As I sat down, God was giving me years of people. Some of you for the last two years. For the last three years. You have been going through terrible times. You cannot explain. You are even wondering whether your God is alive. But he sent Paddy to tell you that he rules in your life. He is working in your life. Yes, some of you lost friends. Some of you were bereaved. Some of you, you lost people you thought were helpful to the journey. Some of you were rejected. Where are you? Some of you, you thought you were going to, you were going to marry but you didn't know what but the person walked out I'm here to preach to you God rules my cat maybe they are here God rules Bosiah <laughs> God rules God rules in the affairs of men God is in control whether I'm on the sea or not. God is in control whether I'm in debt or not. God is in control whether I'm sick or not. God is in control whether you are laid redundant, you have no job or not. God is in control whether you are left alone in the family. There is no family member when you have a case. There is nobody to lead you, accompany you. God is in control. Oh, my You are calling yourself
of an orphan God is in control you just failed an exams God is in control somebody said they don't want to be with you again and so they are taking the dory back to the family God the devil is a liar something is about to drop you hallelujah hallelujah permit me permit me to finish the instruction and then we will continue just want to share with us five demos if i said demo demonstrations of god's sovereign rule and by this we are looking at god as our life source number one God orchestrates all things according to his rule and will. Whether you like it or not. God orchestrates. When we say orchestrate, it's like an orchestra. People having different um, musical instruments, saxophone, trombone, the percussions, and so on. And then they bring it in an ensemble form and they all have to play a particular note so that there will be symphony, there will be symphony, there will be a flow, there will be harmony. And as they do that, they, it becomes a blessed sound to the hearers. So you don't only hear the drums, you don't only hear the sax, but everything, all things work together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So the NLT of Ephesians knew you before they Whenever I say this, I therefore I say that there is no accidental child but accidental parents. Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. Oh, come on now. They want to make you feel inferior. Maybe you heard from your mother. Maybe you heard from your father. You were nearly aborted. But you are not an accident. Hey, hey, where are you? So you are thinking that ah, uh, maybe next year you won't do it. But I am here to let you know it's a life from the pit of hell. Keep on keeping on. Keep on driving. Keep on worshiping God with fear and trembling. Keep on being committed. Keep on giving. Keep on paying your tithe. Keep on going for evangelism. Keep on saying, my God, your labor of love will not be in vain. The scripture says, God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love wherein you have labored and ministered. Hey, if you will not be weary and you will not faint in the due season, you shall be rewarded. Okay, there, where are they? You will be rewarded. Okay, I will be rewarded. Paddy, your labor will not be in vain. Oh, where are you? Mention your name and say, my labor. There is a disease that the enemy has thrown into the airwaves. It is called the give up sickness. Give up. People are giving up. People are backsliding. Once upon a time, you knew that they were evangelists. But now, go and see them at the pub, drinking beer, drinking other things. Go and see many. The Bible says, if the days are not shortened, even the elect, the very elect, I fall away. Tell your neighbor, don't faint. The Bible says, when you faint in a day of adversity, your strength is small hallelujah amen and so the scripture says in proverbs chapter number nine and verse number three thirty three uh, nine proverbs 16 rather verse number nine and verse 33 we're looking at this for the second point a man's plan a man's mind plans his way a man's mind plans his way but the Lord directs his steps and makes them sure. 
fat as you can. You go to some corporation, they tell you the food that you can only eat it within the company. You can't take some out. A miracle is coming to us here. Verse 33 of Proverbs 16. The lot is cast into the lap. But the decision is holy of the Lord. You said that you were supposed to be promoted but somebody was put there. Is that your case? It could be God trying your faith. Because many of us, we believe that God should trust us with treasures. But the other flip side of the coin is, can God also trust you with troubles? Because it is out of your test, you can have testimonies. And life is a series of opposites. Sometimes you are down, sometimes you are up. Sometimes you are, you, are, you are smelling something bad. Sometimes you are like a fragrance of sweet perfume. That is how life is. But when you get that understanding like Spurgeon said, the day I got to understand that God rules in the affairs of men, mm, something settles in you. When others are somersaulting, you say the Lord is a refuge and ever present help in time of need. I mean, some 46 now, let the rivers roar, let the waters roar, but there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Miriam, I will not be shaken. I will wait till my change come. If a man dies, will he live again? All the days of my appointed time, will I wait till my change comes I will not run ahead of God I will not rush and young girl I will not rush and crash I will not sell my bed right I will not curse God and die The world is trying to make us to come to the realization, even on social media, they are trying to say that there is no use to serve God. Even when you are going to see your pastor, they say that, oh, go and seek psychological counseling. I believe in balance. But uh, I started reading in applied psychology. But then, then I got to realize at some point, I realized that, listen, they, they, uh, they were just drifting and going deeper into just the sciences of it. And then even ready to embrace other occultic twists. But anything godly they don't want it i remember my lecturer marking my script i wrote my first assignment and then within my i guess i had believe believe in something believe just paddy paddy he put a red pen under them paddy paddy what why, why this way <laughs> hello Proverbs chapter number 19 verse 21. It's like a, some history date. Many plans are in a man's mind. <laughs> we make about 66,000 decisions within 24 hours. Several things come. Hallelujah. Amen. Several, this is several thoughts run. Several thoughts run into human mind. About 6,000 6, of them. Every, a lot of them. Which one do you engage? Which one do you give heed to? Or which one do you respond to? Eh? And then statistics is showing that, you know, even about 230 something of them are only on food. Will I eat banku or kakro? By the time you think and back and forth and back and forth. Hallelujah. Many plans in a man's mind, but it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand. 
Hallelujah. Proverbs 20, 24. Man's steps are ordered by the Lord. I love that one. And it says, how then can a man understand his ways? You yourself, you don't understand that. Thing. Why are you concluding on what you don't understand? Your conclusion will be wrong. Did you hear what I said? I said, you don't understand it. You won't understand it. Because the Bible says, and lean not on your own understanding. With all your ways, acknowledge him. All the ways, good, bad, ugly. Acknowledge him. Still come to church. Oh, a lady in our chair who lost her husband moved me throughout the week. We're having personal prayer. This woman with her black will still be coming to the service. And she will be coming and said, wow, I have never seen anything like this. Most of the time when it happens, they will say, stay in the house. They will be tell you it's a taboo. Meanwhile, they can't help you. But the one who will help you, they want to dissociate you from. That is how our world has become so wicked. On the side, you are seeing that people even don't want to go to church again. They are saying things. People are seeing the helpers, the pastors who are supposed to help you. They have been blackmailed washed in in whatsoever all of them you might think that it's not you but if they are doing it to somebody you better fetch water and put it by your side if the beard of your we are in the beard generation the beard of your brother is burning fetch water and put it by yours look at your neighbor don't say anything it means your neighbor is a suspect Jeremiah chapter 10 and verse number 23. It says, Oh Lord, please Jeremiah in the name of the people. I know that the determination of the ways of a man is not in himself. The ways of a man is not in himself. And I love this. He said that it is not in man, even in a strong man or in a man at his best to direct his own steps. You can direct your steps. There are many times I thought I was right. I was right spiritually. I was right, you know, uh, what do you call it? Uh, exegetically I was right humanetically I was right scripturally I thought that I was on point but I was wrong I said me who has been wrong several times you did that and you realize that ah, you have made a big fool of yourself See, oh, 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 oh. Am, I, am, I, am I speaking to true people and those of you who are overly proud you are not able to go and say sorry Hello, are we here? The ways of God are not our ways. Mama, thank you for this team that God rules. This is what we need in our day and age. When you get that understanding, you give God the right of way. Lead me on. Go where you go, I will follow. Lord, not unto me, but unto you. Listen, Christianity has become a movement of testimonies. Hey, I got it. The breakthrough. How about the one who is bereaved? Hello? In this journey, things happen. But all of us, our issues do not happen at the same time. When I lost my mother, somebody was celebrating their mother. When I lost my father, somebody was celebrating their... When, when I lost my sister, somebody was celebrating their siblings. And uh, should I continue to be a pastor? I remember my mother's own. You know, they had called me. A brother came to call me. He said that one of them is my chiefs or something. The person had been jujued. And then the, the person was rotting. They called me in one of the places in Takra. We went there. I saw them and the whole room was. I said, Pastor, please pray. Pastor, 
prayed, 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 prayed. I forgotten about it. I was, I was until somebody called me and said, "Come and look, the man is up." And even when we we're telling him not to go back to the village again, he's gone to the village. I said, hey, "Is that so?" I was in town. I saw the man myself. He had bought in you know, the water and then he could even lift it left and right. And he was going. I said, Hey, wow, God can heal like that. Somebody who is rotten, God can heal like that. And I prayed for my mother, but she died. As you, some of you who are testimony oriented, you can't clap. And so you listen, a false balance is an abomination. That is why, if we don't take care, the very elect might backslide because all our Christianity is about get, 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 get. But Job said, The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of of the Lord. You see, Papa is lifted up the hand. She, he understands. But do you? If you are gone through what he has gone through, will you still be standing? Will you still be ushering? Will you still be preaching? Tell five people, God rules. God rules. Am I helping somebody here? Hallelujah. Amen. The third thing demo I want to bring to our attention is this. That behind all human acts, the biblical writers assume God. In their write-ups, they assume God. How? They assume God in the terms of the fact that he is the causer. Everybody say causer. There's a law of cause and effect. The, the, it, we usually say in front of there is an adage that Papa and Kabibi are Bibi in your credit. It's like something, nothing moves without something else touching it. And then even scientifically said, he said that everything starts at a place of rest until a force that is greater than it comes. So we we'll see God as the causer. He is the one who caused it. You said, oh, I lost my job. No, that is not the end of your life. You see, the only time it becomes the end of your life is when that thing kills you. But you say, sister, I don't know what I've been through. There are many other afflictions of the righteous. Going through makes you a righteous person. Life is not about what we escape, but what we go through. You think that I'm here because of the anointing. I have been through stuff. I have lost things. I've lost properties. I've left things. Hallelujah. I've been rejected. Listen. Life is driven by the course I call God. God is the one behind your life. And this message is bringing a prompting to you that acknowledge. Tell four people, acknowledge that God rules. Yeah, 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 yeah. God rules. God rules. No matter what, he is there. No matter what, he rules. He said, Pastor, the rape case, yes, God rules. Everything that happens, it that God directed it to happen, or he saw he allowed it to happen for another greater cause only that right now here we can see we are short-sighted in terms of the bigger picture and i'm here to just prep somebody because in the next six months somebody's life is about to turn around but if you can wait, in the next four months, somebody's life is about to shift. Oh, this church, oh, we were worshiping in the woods up. Hey, I mean, something greater is about to happen in ICGC second year. There is a miracle coming. You might be thinking that you have forgotten, but God is about to shift some things.
Anyone who is a causer is a source in themselves. Hallelujah. Jeremiah says that is there anything too hard for the Lord to do? God is the originator in the beginning God. If he is in the beginning God, then he's the causer. He said, Pastor, you don't know the kind of sickness that came. I, my, my stomach was rumbling like some war front or something. You, you, I went to, you don't know what happened and so on. Are you alive? Are you, my God, my God, my God. Whatever happened, it presupposes that God has a bigger picture and I'm announcing it to you in the season of new beginning. The old and the changed, giving place to the new. Behold, I do a new thing. Therefore, forget about the past. My soul march on. I'm marching to Zion. Beautiful Zion. I am coming one day at a time. I'm not showing the towel. I'm not giving up because if God be for me, so then I will say that it is arrogant to think you are in control. It is arrogant to think that you are in control. Yeah, you wrote the exams. But I know people who are good but could not pass exams. I know somebody who, oh my God, an old friend of mine, you will see in those days in the same, he could, he could help people with hard maths and then work those people in the school times. You see a lot of chalk and big books. You see those people. I remember that brother. Oh, it was in law somewhere in the UK. I said, hey, he, the way he had this that he taught, they all sailed through. But he himself, the scissors could not give him a haircut. It is arrogant to think that you are in control. Yes, I know you fix your own breakfast. Yes, I know you paid your own rent. But had that not been the permission of God, anybody who is a ruler gives permission. He's the one who permitted. Amos chapter 3 verse number 6. Shall a trumpet be blown in from the AMPC? Yeah. Shall a trumpet be blown in the city and the people not be alarmed and afraid? Shall misfortune or evil occur as punishment and the Lord has not caused it? Did you hear that? Whatever happened, our cousins, they understand it better. Listen, there are parts that we agree and there are parts we think some things that are even not there. And then later you realize they were not there. Down for you not to pray and realize that they were there. The king just put it this way. Said, who is he who says a thing and it comes to pass? When God commands it not. Uh, some of the, you, you are being cursed by people. Verbal curse, non-verbal curse. But who is he that says a thing and it comes to pass? When God commands it not. Somebody put their hand on their chest. That over their dead body that you marry. Who is he that says a thing and it comes to pass? When God God commands it not. They say, I see this is a candy. They are not going anywhere. Who is he that says a thing and it comes to pass when God commands it not? They say, Nobody from the family will rise up to be a giant. Who is he that says a thing and it comes to pass when God commands it not? Tonight, may your perception about the rulership of God cause him to bring a great performance in your life. 
he said to Jeremiah in Jeremiah 1 11, what seest thou Jerry? And he said I see a rod of an almond tree he said you have perceived right you have seen right, the verse number 12 said, because you have seen right, I will hasten my word to perform it there is a performance for somebody in this room, where are you? I said there is a performance because you are going to see well as I speak life and death am I coming as I speak the Bible says the words I will speak they are spirit they are spirit they are spirit great grace is coming over you great grace let me share the fourth demo so we are about closing very soon the fourth demo is this our daily endeavors are governed by God's sovereign rule and will. Our daily, daily, if you are not able to recognize the microseconds and the seconds and the minutes, you will not be able to have the hours. You will, if you don't recognize the hours, you will miss the days. If you miss the day, you will miss the weeks. If you miss the weeks, you will miss the month. If you miss the month, you will miss the years. Who has despite days of small beginning? Anything that starts big will end very soon. Everything starts small. Tell your neighbor I'm coming. Tell your neighbor I'm a work in progress. James 4, 13 and 14 from the TPT. It says, listen, those of you who are boasting today or tomorrow, we will go to another city and spend some time and go into business and make prof heap, make heap of profit verse 14 but you don't have a clue what tomorrow may bring for your fleeting life is but one breath of air that is visible in the cold only for a moment and then vanishes hallelujah hallelujah this is why you everything that you do say by the grace of god by the will of god hallelujah if not anything let our cousins remind you hallelujah yes anytime I, they mention it on the tv wherever they are in political suit they and what they will say by the grace of god by the will of God when if God wills rather if God wills yeah if God wills hallelujah last but not the least of the demo God permits Satan slash man to act God permits God permits Satan man to act and we realize from scripture that God permitted Satan in several ways. God permits Satan or man to act. This is part of his divine design and final control. So in Job chapter 1, we see that Job, <laughs> there is a cosmic conference behind the scenes. Job didn't know that they were talking about him. Meanwhile, God and they, they were saying, have you seen my servant Job? He too, he was in somewhere thinking about himself. Invariably, God is saying that Job, I've trusted you with treasure. Can I trust you with trouble? Can I, sir, can I trust you with trouble? And the deal is this, your end shall be greater than your beginning. And then we see Job, you know, they didn't know but all that happens nobody loves to read the book of Job <laughs> and the Lord from Job 2 6 he says and the Lord said to Satan behold he is your, your, in your hands only spare his life hey so what is this this is negotiation some of you the bigger picture of what you are really suffering now eyes have not seen nor has it entered into the heart of man. Your light and momentary affliction is fetching for you a far weightier glory. 
Some my God, you might not believe it, but I will say I believe it for you by force. I love you by force. I believe it for you by force. I love you by force. I believe it for you by force. I call it done in the name of Jesus. Hey, you are sitting here somewhere. God is boasting about you. Do you think you can bind it? You can bind it. You can bind this one. At a point he has to, you know, shave all his hair, tear his clothes, sit in ashes. Even when the friends came, they said that God is punishing you. Listen, there are some, a man of God lost the, the child. Lost some, some, oh my God. You know, something else happened. And then it wasn't long, he had an accident. Something else also happened. And he himself was, was put in the hospital. And then some other men of God were, if you have gone, just go and stand with the brother. When they went, the man was sick. In the bed. He said, do you fast at all? Do you read your word? You should do midnight prayer so. Ooh. Listen. Some of you, if you saw the bigger picture that God is preparing for you, you will thank God for your pain. You will know that in all things, we should give thanks. You will come to understand that God rules in the affairs of men. The testimony, testimony, Christianity is part, not the full package. Yeah, I know, I know what will make second day people come and mama fill the whole place. Oh! somebody's hand was here we, we believe in miracles yes but you think that if your miracle comes the same hand that was shriveled that came hammer can hit it tomorrow did you hear what i said how will you call that one too ah a prophet of god healed some a raised up a, a, a child a, 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 the woman you know who gave a room to him in her upper room and then she stayed. and the child that he had you know um, a pray for her to bring forth the child died and even the prophet was saying that this one God did not tell me can join you that why should he tell you hello the secret things belongs to God some of us if God had told us that you will you will go through something say ah la lie oh no 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 god then don't call me god don't use me oh no 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 who should god use oh there is nobody clapping to the glory of god here because maybe i came to bust your bubble i chance on one scripture luke 22 31 to 32 from the amplifier he says simon simon you can put your name there peter listen satan has asked oh did you see that satan has asked excessively when satan is asking he doesn't ask more <laughs> some of us when we pray we get tired but when satan is going to god asking permission to cause a mayhem he said that does job serve you for not have you not put a head around you skin for skin you take all that he has and see if he will not curse you and that when satan goes to god concerning what you are going through now he doesn't stop he keeps on excessively ask god peter satan has excessively asked, asked excessively that that all of you be given up to him out of the power and the keeping of God that he might sift of you all of you like grain but I have prayed I have prayed especially for you Peter that your own faith may not fail and when you yourself have turned again strengthen and establish your brethren hallelujah hallelujah oh we see how god is good we see how god is good so this in all this 
it's appointed to one major fact that whatsoever you put in the hand of God if you don't waver if you don't get weary in the due season he will honor you your name might be Joseph let your brothers hate you every one of us say we want people to love you but if people didn't hate me I wouldn't have come this far some people had to reject me God had to permit them oh some of you right now and let me give you a clue I have a prayer I pray I don't pray those prayers in public I thank God even for people who rejected me for have they not rejected I wouldn't have found people like yeah that is the truth mama let me tell you that night I am I'm surprised you mentioned that night all night that I came here to preach over 20 years ago up there I can't see your roof is nice <laughs> hallelujah amen and when I came I remember I was with my mind and she was telling me that oh they actually invited a particular pastor it was a particular pastor who was supposed to come and the name is coming it was a particular pastor who was supposed to come and have that all night and the pastor we are estimators and valuators of life so weighed the whole thing he said no she can't come so it was a disappointment i'm preaching i'm preaching with a case study i'm preaching <laughs> hey and so and so i, I remember he said, and even when I came, she didn't even know me. She didn't know me, but she had no choice because the all night must go on. And so we had to, so I'm sure, but the disappointment was necessary for this koinonia. not been this one so now do you have a new prayer point brother this man of God is not mad but your anointing and your breakthrough that has not come yet is causing the oil to flow from here to you receive your visitation receive your visitation There is a man that sang a song we usually sing when we are.